Congratulations! You finally found somebody you really like, and you're scared. You're tired of simping, but you're not alone on this one. I've been there too. But I had to change my dating strategy, and these were a few things that I did that drove her nuts. Start working on yourself. This is literally the baseline for a great relationship, and it will put you in the right position to make her like you. To be very attractive to the opposite sex, you need to start having your own goals, your own dreams and aspirations. Nobody wants to date a boring person. Think about this. The 2013 movie The Secret Life of Walter Mitty comes to mind. When you're trying to get into a relationship or make a girl like you and you have a boring life, that's literally what you look like. You're like a tower of cards. Though it looks great, with one push, it all comes down. Mitty was like that at first until he decided to change his narrative about life. He eventually got the girl of his dreams, but none of it would have happened if he decided to stay in one place. Many men want the easy path. They don't have enough hope and self-belief to fully commit to making their own life better. Somehow, many men want the quickest way to get the girl of their dreams without changing their life or negative habits. Not only does that not work, it wouldn't be good for you if it did. Life is all about courage and going into the unknown. You need to be a high-value man and not the average guy who can occasionally get his pipes drained from someone they buy flowers for. For that to happen, you need to focus on you. Focusing on your goals and doing things for your own pleasure is one of the best ways that you can make any lady attracted to you be more charming. This is a major problem with modern dating advice. Having a charming personality goes against so many of the values pickup artists teach. That's because charm is a quality of agreeableness and even niceness. The reason why many pickup artists are against those two qualities I mentioned is because many newbies coming onto the dating game take it to the extreme, and that is wrong. Being charming does not mean you're always passive or always nice, it's about validation. When combined with enough confidence, charm will make your personality addictive like a drug. To be charming is to make people feel better about themselves when they're around you. That's what happened exactly with Jenny Jerome, Winston Churchill's mother, who had dinner with William Gladstone and Benjamin Disraeli. She captured the essence of charm when she said, When I left the dining room after sitting next to Gladstone, I thought he was the cleverest man in England. But when I sat next to Disraeli, I left feeling like I was the cleverest woman. While Gladstone showed that he was a witty and clever person, Disraeli did the opposite. He spent the whole evening asking her questions and also listened to her. He tried to curve the conversation towards her and naturally she talked because we always feel good about talking about ourselves. In life, there is always a conflict between who we are and who we want to be. I'm learning that one right now. To be charming means that you can make people feel that they're already who they want to be. And what could be more powerful than that? Always listen. As a man, you shouldn't make this mistake and it will kill any chance of you driving her nuts. You're having a conversation with the woman of your dreams and she's droning on about herself. While she's doing this, you find yourself thinking about what you're going to say next. I did that a lot, but little did I know how wrong. How, no, how rude it was. When you find yourself doing this, it shows that you've lost interest in the whole conversation and you're turning your attention to something more interesting, at least to you, yourself. No doubt, it's completely natural to do this. Everybody does this to some degree. But the man who can control this feature in his mind will have a magnetic effect on everyone they interact with. It's so rare to feel like someone actually cares about what you're saying. Sadly, at the time of this video, you won't be able to see a video course on how to make your crush wet with your listening skills. Notwithstanding, listening is a powerful tool, and the more you use it, the more you'll become better at it. Take Bill Clinton, for example. Great guy, great public speaker, and he's extremely charismatic. However, what people seem to notice the most about him is how patiently he listens to them. Giving your undivided attention to any lady will make you stand out for most of the guys who are trying their best to impress her. Rather than doing what simps do, Make her feel like she's interesting and show her that whatever she says to you matters. That's how she's going to fall for you. For a short exercise, the next time you talk to her, maintain strong eye contact while talking. Ignore your phone, stop looking at your surroundings, and solely focus on her. Have a hobby and be good at it. Sometimes we blame women too much. We claim that many women have boring personalities, but then we fail to look at ourselves. Most of us in the manosphere community are reformed simps who spend our lives having no vision, trying to get laid, playing video games, and smoking weed. Without real-life experiences, sometimes we may tend to express ourselves through pop culture and also define ourselves by the media we consume. No original, self-actualized identity. In the manosphere, there is an endless supply of information on how to lift weights and how to approach any girl. But what happens when you have a chiseled body and a good gaming tactics, but nothing else? 
While women might be judged heavily by how they look, men are also judged but by what they do. So, what do you like to do? What do you plan on doing? Either directly or indirectly, people tend to ask us these questions, and you would need to have good answers. If the answer to all these questions is Xbox and watching hentai, well, you might be doing something wrong. I don't know. Yes, obviously, that was sarcasm. You're doing something very wrong. Hobbies are activities that you do with noticeable results. Playing video games is not a hobby, and neither is watching sports, drinking beer, or hanging out with friends. Now, there's nothing wrong with these activities, but you won't achieve anything tangible at the end. You spend all your days gaming, you're gonna look at your deathbed, and you're gonna say, wow, thank god I have a good KD, right? No. No. Therefore, not a hobby. Hobbies are more similar to skills, and to develop a well-rounded personality, you need to pursue at least one hobby. This may be physical, like exercising, snowboarding, rock climbing, and playing conventional sports, and more. There's many more hobbies. There's more hobbies than there are cities in the world. You can have creative hobbies like drawing, painting, music, sculpting, singing, photography, and so on. Other challenging hobbies include writing, coding mechanics, and learning foreign languages. In all, most of these hobbies are not innate, and it's a matter of practice and commitment. Decide on what one you want to grow in and work towards that. Have good hygiene. It's more than just a handsome face and smelling good. If the girl of your dreams comes to the house unannounced, would you let her in? If you can, well, you can skip the video to the next part, but if you can't, I think you need to fix this problem as soon as possible. Keeping your house and your body clean is part of being a man. I'm not gonna lie, I used to be a very dirty person, but I had to change. In a way, ladies love men that can hold their shit together. Part of your brain knows that you're not gonna take the woman of your dreams to your room, which seems to always be under construction. And to solve that issue, you need to ensure that your car, your house, and your body are 45 minutes away from being presentable. In those few minutes, you need to ensure that you can make everything clean within that time. Though this may not be a perfect technique, to some extent, it's reliable. Now, I know some of you might say it doesn't matter because your game is amazing and you go to the gym regularly. Have some self-respect, you nimwad. Clean your house, do your laundry, stop making yourself look like a crime scene. It won't be easy at first, trust me, I get it. But as you continue, you'll slowly start seeing the rewards, and even more importantly, if you do it for a good couple of months, it'll just be a habit. Make her do something for you. Modern feminism and popular culture foster a viewpoint that having a woman in your life is a great reward, and this guy is gonna have to jump through hoops to get her. The man will always have to go out of his way and do everything he can to keep her happy. For many men, that's the true measure of love. How much you're willing to sacrifice for somebody. But wait, if that's true, if that's a, a real measure of love, why aren't women doing the same thing for men? Well, according to Sims, we don't ask women to sacrifice. It's her willingness to accept a man's sacrifice that demonstrates her love. Right? Wrong. Women who love their partners will show their love the same damn way. I promise. They sacrifice for him, they buy things for him, do things for him without asking, and have coitus with him when he asks, and when she feels like it. Consent is important, okay. Here's a tip on how to make her do things for you. Now, this may be a bit manipulative, but it's definitely not evil or negative. It's called the Benjamin Franklin effect, and it starts with you asking a girl to do something for you. When she does it, she unconsciously likes you a bit more. But how come? You see, when we do stuff for people, we subconsciously think that since we do something for someone, we might like them. Benjamin Franklin used his technique on fellow rivals, and as the story goes, these opponents liked him more afterward. Also, there's something called the consistency bias, as the Benjamin Franklin effect occurs. After someone has done something for you a couple of times, they're more likely to do more for you just because they don't want to look inconsistent. That being said, please, please, please be careful. Don't overdo it or else you'll just be using her, and then you are awful. Piece of trash. Worthless, actually. So, don't do that. Be funny. Everyone has a sense of humor. However, it becomes a problem when your humor doesn't appeal to people. For some of us who are not natural comedians, being funny can be very daunting. It takes actual intelligence and actual insight to be funny. I know, I know, it's weird. Knowing how to make your woman laugh is very important. All you gotta do is put yourself in enough situations to get used to telling an unfunny joke, and the more you tell, the better you're gonna get. It's, it's an inherently vulnerable thing to try and put yourself out there, but it is important, and it's not that bad. Many men tend to believe that it's the tight body that the girls are attracted to and not your sense of humor. To them, being funny has absolutely no effect on female sexual attraction. 
that's both right and wrong. They're right simply because being funny is not going to get your panties wet. But they're wrong because having a good sense of humor will push a lot of attraction switches. By now, you might notice how many girls list a sense of humor as an attractive trait. Now, to take a brief departure back into ancient Greek times, they figured one thing out that is, I cannot believe, as universally applicable as it is. The golden mean. There is balance to everything in life, so let's find some balance here. Being funny doesn't mean that you should be a clown or a monkey jumping up and down for her amusement. Not only are you disappointing yourself, but by instinct many women realize that you're trying very hard to tell a joke. Women don't have sex with clowns. Every girl loves to laugh, and being funny can get you social proof, so if you are genuinely funny, you will be the life of every party. Surprisingly, it gets other men to actively want you around and to listen to you. In a way, it gives you a form of respect amongst men. Just tell jokes to amuse yourself, and not her. Break the touch barrier. Everyone knows that when a girl likes a guy, she will allow him to touch her, hold her hands, and everything in between. Men, on the other hand, have been hardwired to escalate touch and initiate sex. Sadly, over the years, our upbringing has found a way to put some brakes on that drive. We've now been taught that you may look like a creep if you touch ladies. While this is understandable in cases where some women don't want to be touched by men, it's not entirely true in all cases. Social programming has affected the way that we embrace masculinity, but it still can be corrected, I promise you. If you're scared of touching a woman, your girl, you need to remove that programming out of your head. There's no perfect approach to touching a woman. You should always assume attraction, keep testing the waters, but also observe her actions objectively. At first, that might be hard to do, but you will get better at it. Permit yourself to explore. When a woman chooses to spend her time with you in private, she wants you to touch her. Give in to your natural urges and stop thinking about what she sees you as, whether you're not a pervert or not. Just allow our body to do what it wants to do. And assuming you've read the signals right, it's what she wants to do. And if she rejects you, just walk away. No harm, no foul, right? Boost your confidence. Improving your appearance will go a long way, but if you always look down on yourself, other people will likely look down on you as well. The best general advice I can offer you is to work out regularly. Aside from this, girls love it when a guy shows that he doesn't give a nut about what people think. It goes without saying, being confident in your thoughts and your actions is one of the best ways to be attractive to just about anybody. Also, standing up straight and looking ahead doesn't sound like much, but the way you carry yourself can make a massive difference in how other people perceive you. If you can afford it, you can change your looks. And guess what? Doesn't have to be a total makeover. No, just changing the way you look can help that first impression. You can look at a few celebrities and imitate their dress sense, but I wouldn't copy them verbatim or to a T, I guess, because that means that you're not your own person. Take what inspires you and make a new style. Aside from having the right look, taking a public speaking class is another way to boost our confidence. It'll help you talk more confidently and more smoothly as well. These classes are also a great way to meet new people and interact. Learning to dance can also very much help. Yeah, you know, I was once like you plebeians. I couldn't dance to the rhythm of a song, but then I took lessons, and it actually fixed it somehow. I thought it was, I thought bad dancing was in my jeans, you know, the white boy jeans, but uh, no, it is a teachable skill, turns out. Another one is learning how to defend yourself. That'll also improve your self-confidence. Not that you're going to need to use that training all the time, but just knowing that you can defend yourself will put yourself at ease. Again, all that being said, do not go looking for fights. Most girls don't like it, and they're embarrassed with that kind of behavior. Overall, self-confidence doesn't mean that you should be arrogant and brag about yourself. It's mostly about becoming a better version of yourself and knowing what you're worth. As you continue to improve on yourself, chances are that you're going to begin to feel more confident, and it will extend to other areas of your life, including women. Get her emotionally invested in you. The emotions are a huge part of our lives, and they can be beautiful when channeled correctly. That being said, as a man, you shouldn't show your emotions to a woman until she's developed those emotions. Understanding this principle will solve most of the problems that many men are facing in their relationship. Women are only loyal to their sacrifices and emotional investments, and, well, emotional investments are one of the ways that you can make them fall in love with you over and over again. Compared to men, women take longer to get emotionally invested in men. As I said earlier, when a woman really likes you, she will love to do stuff for you and will love to emotionally invest while you fantasize about other things. However, as a man, you need to create a level of balance. People are always attracted to lives that are more interesting than theirs. If a woman succeeds in occupying your thoughts and emotions, she might assume that your life sucks and might want to fixate her thoughts and emotions on something, uh, better. 
be unpredictable. When it comes to human interaction, it is the things that are new or novel that activate parts of our brains that invoke curiosity and attractiveness. Curiosity and romantic attractiveness operate on the same frequency level. That's why a lot of dating experts suggest taking your date to a scary movie. Doing something out of the ordinary, not following the normal routine of things will help you be more attractive. One of the ways that you can do this effectively is by using the push-pull technique. It involves showing a girl that you may not be interested in her. Yet, you like being in her presence. If you use that method effectively, you'll be seen as a mysterious person. Women will always try to predict your actions, so creating a sense of mystery will make her want you even more.